Hey, what's up? It's Ethan, and today I'm having a look at this new lens that I got from TT Artisan. It is a fisheye lens, a 7.5 millimeter f2.0 APS-C X mount lens for my Fujifilm system. Uh, so right now you are seeing me on this lens with my X-T3. Um, I will also show you some samples from my X-E3 uh, that I took out, took this lens out for a little test run. So if you saw my other TT Artisan 17 millimeter review, um, I'm gonna run this very similarly. I'm not trying to get into all the technical specs or anything. I just wanna give you some of my opinions and some of my real world usage for this lens so far. So right away, we're gonna jump into the build quality. So just like the 17 millimeter F1.4, also by TT Artisan, this lens, the 7.5 millimeter, um, feels very premium. It's all metal and glass. Uh, it's, you can tell that it's made with premium components. The focus ring is smooth and provides the perfect amount of resistance. And the aperture ring is also smooth. It's clicked um, and again, has very nice resistance. You're not gonna bump it and potentially bump your settings. To be honest, it has a very satisfyingly pleasant sound when you're clicking that aperture. As I mentioned, it's all metal and all glass, and that front element is a thing of beauty. It's a nice big piece of glass in the front. Um, one thing with that front element though is the design is a bit awkward with the front cap. Uh, because it's a fisheye lens and the um, front element kind of protrudes a bit, um, putting the cap onto the lens, it doesn't quite sit flush. Uh, it kind of has some play on it, so it doesn't kind of stay flat. Um, and it's a little bit awkward, a little odd, I, I wish it could sit flat, uh, it bothers me a little bit, but honestly, it's a lens cap. I'm not that concerned about it. So staying on the topic of the lens cap, um, the lens cap actually has two pieces. So it has this um, outer ring, and then it has this um, screw in middle piece. So if you keep this screwed in, it works as just a normal lens cap. But if you unscrew this, uh, it actually gives you a, circular border like some more traditional fisheye lenses. Um, if this is the look you're going for, you know, you do have that option. Um, I haven't really used it in that way yet. I do have maybe one picture I can show you now uh, where I have used this ring uh, just to give a sample shot. So another feature of this lens, if you will, um, is this very tiny uh, ND filter that you actually screw into the back of the lens. So uh, in between the lens and the camera, there's actually a filter thread on the inside of the lens. We'll, we'll talk a bit shortly about some of the downfalls of this lens, at least for, for my usage, which is the lack of a front, front filter thread. Again, we'll talk about that. Um, but they do give this option here of this small back filter thread. The, the issue here is that we only have ND1000. So this ND1000, if you're looking to take uh, photos where you want to have some kind of motion blur, let's say you're taking a picture of a stream or a waterfall and you wanna see water movement blurred, this is gonna do the job for you. Um, but if you're like me and you wanna use this lens some for video, ND1000 only having this kind of limits your ability. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment because I do wanna talk about this lens for video. Next, we'll jump into what I think is the most important thing and likely what you are most interested in, and that is the actual image quality that you get out of this lens. To me, the center seems pretty sharp. I haven't had any complaints with that for my usage. It's definitely been sharp enough. The distortion is difficult to manage. It's a fisheye lens, that should be expected. You're really going to get this round look. Um, and there's really no way around it whenever you're using a fisheye lens. Sure, you can try to correct some of that in post, but to be honest, if you're using a fisheye lens, you're using it for the distortion. Uh, to me, it's been a little tough to get used to that. Um, I've messed with some fisheye lenses as like lens attachments for an iPhone in the past, uh, just kind of messing around back in the day before I had a real camera system. And it's always fun to play with fisheye lenses, but now I'm trying to find more artistic and creative ways to use this. Uh, and, and I have found it quite difficult to use this focal length uh, just because of that distortion and trying to find the right angles uh, to, to compose with. I have found that if you're shooting at a distance and you have landscapes uh, or, or wide scenes, um, this lens really excels at that. Uh, it's not exactly edge to edge sharp by any means, but 
um, it gets the job done for, for those types of shots. So one other really cool thing about this lens is that it has a rather close minimum focus distance. Uh, so it's actually 0.125 meters or 12.5 centimeters, probably about that that much. <laughs> uh, so you can get, get fairly close to um, the front of the lens. You have to keep in mind that you're gonna get a lot of distortion when that happens. Of course, the closer you are to a fisheye lens, uh, the more pronounced that distortion is gonna be. But if you use it in the right way, it does open up some creative possibilities. So, so one way that I would suggest maybe using is if you're focusing on something very small up close, um, so maybe like a bug on a finger or something like that, um, you can get some pretty cool looks out of that. As long as your, your object is uh, small, if you're trying to get a face up close, you're gonna have crazy distorted features. But if you have something that can be the very center of the image and very small, um, I can see that being a cool use. And one other thing to mention whenever you're using that close focus focusing distance, that's really when you're going to see any kind of shallow depth of field with this lens. Uh, because it is so wide, even though it is an f2.0, which is a quite fast uh, aperture for a, a fisheye lens, because it's so wide, you really don't get much of that shallow depth of field. But if you utilize that close focusing distance, as you just saw, you are gonna get some of that background separation and you are gonna get a rather nice fall off with the bokeh. So now jumping back to my primary focus, which is shooting video. I knew that this lens would have some downfalls for video, the number one being that there's no front filter thread. Um, so I do wanna speak a little bit about that in case you are planning to get this lens or video, I wanna give you some things to consider. To me, this lens definitely suits photographers a bit more than videographers for the reason of the filter thread. Just in case you are unaware, uh, if you are into video, you know this, but in order to control your background separation to get that shallow depth of field, uh, you wanna keep your aperture open. In order to keep your aperture open, you have to use ND filters to control your light. Because this lens doesn't have a front filter thread, you're limited in being able to keep your aperture open. Um, and, and they do supply that one uh, the ND1000 that can be used on the back of the filter thread or back filter thread. The issue with that is it's ND1000. That's very strong. That's not going to suit a lot of cases. Maybe in harsh daylight, that's going to help you out some. Um, and, and it's also a hassle that it's on the back of the lens, so it's kind of hard to utilize. Um, but I'm not complaining because it's something that they gave you. Other fisheye lenses, you're out of luck. So because you can't keep your aperture wide open, and you're not really going to get as much of that shallow depth of field, the use of this lens is a bit more limited in video. Um, you can still get up close and try to get some shallow depth of field if that's the look you're looking for. If you're okay with not getting shallow depth of field, if you don't mind um, more of your shot being in focus, I would utilize the aperture as I'm shooting video with this lens, being able to stop it down um, to control your light is a necessity whenever you're using this lens because again, you're not going to be able to control your light as much with ND filters. So next I just wanna talk about whether or not this lens is a good value. The current price on Amazon is hovering around 175 US dollars. I think that's a pretty fair price. It is a bit more expensive than TT Artisan's other X-mount lenses, the 17 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter. However, I think the price is justified. For sub $200, you're still getting a, a very good price on a fisheye lens of this caliber. So now that I've shared some of my opinions, I wanna give my overall impression of the lens. Again, build quality is awesome. Image quality is pretty great. Um, it does have some downfalls, keeping in mind that uh, a lot of those are just because it's a fisheye lens. In general, fisheye lenses come with some negatives and, and those may be positives for you. For me, it's a tough focal length to work with. It's something that I have to get used to. I'm gonna work with it a bit more and try to get more comfortable. I, I did feel like as I shot with it more, I got a better grasp of it and kind of trying to compose things, angles down the middle and kind of use the distortion to my advantage. So if you are in the market for a fisheye lens for an APS-C camera, specifically the X mount for Fujifilm, I think this is a great lens as long as you're willing to accept the downsides of a fisheye lens like the distortion and not being able to use a filter or, or at least any filter other than an ND1000. That's all I had to share for now for this lens. Stay tuned for, for future gear reviews, photography gear, videography gear, and so on. And thank you so much for tuning in and watching and uh, hope I get to see you again soon. Peace.